We're here at the Hard Rock Cafe in downtown Chicago speaking with Bobby Simmons. I'm Lauren Streck. These are my girls, and this is Sports, Sports City, City Chicago. Chicago. To it, Bobby. Uh, we like to phase on back to your, the early childhood, your developmental stages, as it were. Here, you grew up Chicago kid. Here, what was it like for you growing up in, in Chicago? What was your upbringing like early on? Well, you know, um, pretty typical. You know, two-parent family household, and you know, I had a lot of brothers and sisters growing up. And the thing is that you know, family orientation is is the great thing as far as a kid. And you know, you have role models, you have people you look up to, and you know, um, just, it was great. For you, what, uh, old, one of the older kids, one of the younger kids in the family, were you always, uh, were you I was in the middle. You, so you were right in the middle, so right as the middle. much as you got beat on, you got to beat on the other ones. <laughs> That's the way it goes. <laughs> well, for how, at what age did you really start to get into athletics? Was it uh, early on uh, as uh, you were growing up, uh, your brothers and sisters all playing sports, and then you jumped in, or how did it go for you? Well, everybody pretty much plays sports, but overall basketball itself, I think at age probably about six or seven, um, gradually moved into a neighborhood to where all the kids played. And so either you was going to be the boring kid or you was going to try to fit into what the rest of the guys was doing. And that was something I picked up and had opportunity to get better at it, as you can see. What, was basketball always the first love or was it football, track? What was it for you? Well, as a kid, you played all sports. Um, that was just recreation. And, yeah, right. And, and the thing is that you know, more so than none in Chicago, it's cold outside. So <laughs> I ended up playing more indoor as far as basketball and, you know, things of that nature. All right, for me, I stopped growing in high school. For, when, <laughs> for you, when did it happen? Were you, were you in like fifth grade and seven feet tall? Or when, when did the growth spurt come? Uh, the growth spurt came about seventh grade. Uh, I was like five, eight, seventh grade. Going to my eighth grade year, I was six one, six two. Yeah. So it was a pretty big spurt. I went from a size nine and a half shoe to eleven and a half over the course of a summer. That's nice. I, I was five six, went to five eight, and I was done. Good for you. Your mom must have hated you. You were done with hand me downs after that, weren't you? Well, a lot of the jeans ended up becoming shorts. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call hand-me-down. <laughs> For you in Chicago, who was an early role model? Was it, uh, I mean, you had two, both parents home, so that, a plus uh, as well. When you hear a lot of these stories, a lot of people who were raised by a grandmother or had one family home and their parents had to work all the time, you at least had both influences of your parents. A big, big factor in developing as, as you went on? Of course, a big factor as well as, like you said, grandparents and aunts and uncles. Everybody raised the kids in our family, so, you know, it just wasn't that one person, one or two persons. Uh, collectively as a whole, everybody pitched in wherever they could to make sure that everybody was okay. I gotta ask you, how many cousins and relatives did you have in the city? Was there a place that a Simmons can go where you weren't known or where you can get away with something? No, not at all. Right? Not at all. E e even in the neighborhood, it seems like everyone is family, so. Even if you did something wrong, somebody was going to get you, even if it was a long-distance friend who was close to the family. <laughs> so, probably knew that they were related in some form of fashion. <laughs> when you went on to uh, start really playing and getting competitive, what year was it for you? Because they didn't have AAU back then. Guys uh, weren't really getting picked off in fifth grade as superstars or future stars. When did you start getting into the basketball and, and coaches started noticing? Well, I think uh, for AAU basketball, it started possibly like in my sophomore year. That's mm. when it just started coming around. Because you had Boo Williams camps. Right. You had Five Star. You had camps of that nature. Then you had the Nike All-American camps. Then you had the Adidas big time camps. So those camps were just starting up. So it was a lot of people that um, were starting to rank. 
um, the kids opposed to their positions and their talents. And, you know, uh, after that, just that opportunity. Ended up playing in Orlando for the Nationals and worked my way towards DePaul. Ban called uh, Catch is here with us today, everyone. When we get back, we're going to talk about DePaul. We're going to talk about Bobby Simmons and the recruiting that went on for him and what it was like to play for Pat Kennedy. Stay with us. Sports City Chicago. Be right back. Catch sounding awesome here, Bobby Simmons at Sports City Chicago. And Bobby, uh, you know, before I get into the college, I got to ask you first of all, uh, give me your best high school performance because I know every athlete remembers every game and what they did. You know, what what was that one game that you blew it up? <laughs> that's a tough. That's a long time ago, Mitch. Oh come on, not but, that. You're uh, young. Uh, let me see. Uh, Whitney Young, Chicago State. Okay. Um, it's an annual game we have every year. Um, it was actually two west side teams and two south side teams. Um, I think I had like 30 points and like 10, 12 rebounds or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. Who were some of, do you remember some of the cats you were playing against from the other teams back then? What other, what other guys were being touted in the city and talked about besides yourself? Well, two of them I know I ended up playing with in college. Um, Quentin Richardson and Lance Williams. Um, we had Corey McGetty. We had Rod Thompson. We had um, uh, Paul McPherson. You, you, so had, you, oh, I remember I, Paul could jump out of the gym yeah, back then. Jump over the gym. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you talk about you know, bragging rights. New York likes to boast that they have the players. L.A. likes to say they do. Chicago, though, you have to say uh, the kids that just homegrown, you'd have to put on par with the best in the world, right? I think we're top, top of the food chain uh, because I think uh, for New York guys, it's more ball handling. Um, I guess West Coast is more guys that just want to handle the basketball and shoot all the rock. But therefore, Chicago guys are more overall rounded as far as fundamentals, I think, personally. What year was it? Uh, was it sophomore year that you started seeing scouts and recruits coming out for you? How did that go for you? I, you know, you talk to NFL players and they go on the big trips and they go down and see the game. What's it like for a college basketball player? Do they take you from school to school? Are they some great weekends or what do they pitch at you? Well, when you, as far as recruiting, um, it's limited as far as the NCAA and the rules and everything. So you get, um, I think, $40 for the weekend or something like that. <laughs> and then again, it's like you have the dinners, the meetings, you meet all the coaches, you meet staff at the university, and basically you get a chance to meet the, um, the players and just basically see how things are and basically try to get an insight over the course of a weekend of would this be the right decision that I'm going to make as far as going to this university. What was the factor for you? DePaul, obviously, they've had legendary coaching there, uh, right here in the city. Was it, uh, uh, did the fact that they were also recruiting guys, like you mentioned, Q Richardson, other guys from this area at the same time with you? Well, I think overall it was being close to home. Being home, but being away from home. I think that was the main key that um, gravitated me to DePaul. And also, um, Lance and Quentin, that helped because not only that, they had won three games the previous year before we got there. <laughs> and it was almost as if, like, I can't only do it by myself, so if I can pull some of my colleagues with me, then it'll work out. Um, today's player, though, usually you think they're going for one year. That's it. You know, one year they want to they make their splash if they're a top guy and they want to get right into the NBA. Um, for you, has that helped or hurt the NBA or the college student, uh, the fact that guys are thinking so quickly about jumping in? Well, I could be, I wouldn't say biased, but, you know, um, I think that for guys coming out, if you have the opportunity to go. You got to go? You got to go. Because, God forbid, if anything happens, if you get hurt, you know, you could have career and injuries or anything like that. You don't have any protection as far as longevity or not that putting yourself in position to be successful. Also, as a veteran NBA player, you could school on a kid or two, hopefully, as when, they're, when they're 18, 19, right? Yeah, and then I'll still press them to make sure they go back and get the education as well. Because <laughs> now you can afford to pay for it. What was the best advice you got as you went on through college and, get, and started preparing for the NBA? The best advice is be seen and not hurt. 
Really? Who that said was, it? Uh, Coach Hamrick told me that. You were drafted second round by Seattle Supersonics back then, Seattle Sonics, and then immediately you started getting traded and moved around. Um, and, and it seemed to be your way in, in your career. You, you've been moving from city to city and proving, having to prove yourself over and over again. What does it say about you and, and your work ethic that you've been able to do that? Well, you got to be blue collar. Everybody can't be white collar. So some guys have to put the time in and get, get the job done. Some guys get it. Some guys have to work for it. Let me ask you, uh, as we get ready to go to break, NBA experiences, um, what, is, what was the most rewarding on-court experience for you so far? Um, most rewarding? Yep. Mike Dunleavy when I was playing with the Clippers. Tell why. Uh, uh, Kerry Kittles was out for the year, and he gave me a starting position to um, start out the season. And therefore, I had opportunity to get most improved player of the whole entire NBA. That was the year you averaged over 16 points and 12 boards, I think, a, a game, something like that, double-double. Exactly. Actually, yeah. I was shooting over 50% behind um, the three-point line. Oh, see, and that, also, now, now see, here see, comes. see, that's more updated. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> give me every stat because I know every athlete knows every stat. So. No, it was, it was over 50% behind three and over 50% uh, from the floor. Nice, nice. It's your best year right there with Mike Dunleavy. Not to say you don't have good years ahead of you. Well, it was the best opportunity I've had. They, okay, and that's the difference that people have to understand, the business, because I know with football, you know, number one draft pick, if someone who's getting paid, they're going to get the chance to play. Even exactly. If, exactly. We won't complain about that. Though, Not here. at all. All right, when we come <laughs> back, we're going to talk about Bobby and his next project, or the one that he has underway, a great business here in Chicago. We'll also talk about some goals coming up. It's Sports East Chicago, and it's Band Called Catch. City Chicago girl Jessica Vacco visited Bobby Simmons at his store, Success. That's right, Lauren. We spoke to Bobby about the work he does at his store and the impact it has on the community around him. So what is your favorite part about having the store? Well, I think it's interactive, you know. Um, find an employee who's very personable and not only that interact with people, very well. Fashion has been something that I've always loved. Um, love sneakers, um, love jackets. I love the Four Seasons. So basically, that's one thing about Four Seasons that you always get opportunity to transition and always dress. I um, actually we use a lot of different designers, um, actually locally here in Chicago. And we give them that opportunity to showcase their talents, as well as we work with kids from Columbia, kids from AIDT, um, as far as designing. And we basically give people opportunity to take off. And now how much time do you spend here? That's my due diligence. Yeah. Um, basically, I go to the gym in the mornings, I'll be here in the evenings. Um, sometimes vice versa, sometimes I have to come in for meetings in the morning and go work out in the evening. You can tell it is definitely a success. There's people all over. The people who are working, you can tell, love what they're doing. They love you. You could tell when you walked in. They're connoisseurs. They're, <laughs> they're they, they know everything about the sneakers from the airbag into the 3M, like mesh materials that they, they make them with, all the above. Now we're standing in front of all these shoes right here and you were saying your workers do their research and they know everything about it. Do they teach you about it? Do you know all about it? Well, actually, I think they, they may know a little bit more than me yeah. as far as the sneakers that come out. Uh, they do so much research as far as the shoes that be coming out next year and two, three years from now. And, you know, they pretty much keep me in tune as far as what's the next hottest thing. Tell me, like, while you're walking down the street and you see people and, you know, people recognize you, what is it that you would tell them about this store that makes it so much different than all the stores? One thing is you have to experience the environment. Um, actually, it's pretty hard because they're doing a lot of construction on Michigan Avenue and they're fixing up a lot of buildings around here. If you didn't know we were here, once you come in here, you'll realize you always come back. All right, Bobby, success, uh, as we just saw there, one of uh, a very successful little company for you right now, uh, the boutique. I've been there a number of times. You've outfitted me, which was no easy task, as you can tell from what I'm wearing. Uh, how did you first get involved? What, what made you really think about wanting to get into the whole aspect of 
Nike sneakers and clothing together. Were you always a fashionista? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, I'm always been into, into fashion and um, love sneakers. So I think uh, myself and my partner Lavelle actually partnered up together and had an opportunity that um, they came about. First, it was the, the toughest part was finding a location. Right. Um, we ended up in the South Loop at 1329 South Michigan. And that's where home and success lies right now. You know, guys come in. It's pretty funny. The other day, I was uh, the uh, Browns were in town to play the Bears, and I'm, I was talking to them, and I started seeing tweets. And you had a bunch of Browns players coming in. So the word is out when people come to town to check it out and see what they can do there. Uh, how, how did this grow? Uh, I know sneakerheads love to compare and show off. It was it word of mouth? Guys started being able to do their own thing with sneakers, and then one athlete tells another, and then it starts spreading like that? I think it's um, basically grassroots marketing, um, basically word of mouth itself. Um, a lot of my peers shop here, and they tweet, and um, Facebook, they do all that. And the, basically the social network itself has helped out drastically as far as you know, getting people into the environment and understanding what we, what we bring to Chicago. Uh, same competitive attitude that you take on the basketball court, do you do that with your business? I think overall, yeah, you have to. Um, basically, if you can, corner the market. And basically, it's almost like the game of Monopoly we always played when we were kids. Bob everything, and therefore, it is what it is. Uh, for you, uh, do you end up making money? Do you end up just use, buying all the product that you, because I, I know you probably have a pretty good collection. So is it a part where you have to sit back and go, I, I can't buy every sneaker I design But here. The, the thing is, like, even if it's not design sneakers, uh, Nike ID is more personable with the client. Sure. And a lot of the sneakers that I get are the ones that they want. Uh, is it against the rules to wash your sneakers? Yes, yeah, against the rule. Thank goodness you said that, man. I can't <laughs> st Sneakers are meant to get dirty eventually, right? <laughs> they get dirty, but then again, as far as sneakerhead collectors, they're going to wear them occasionally, but then again, they have to be in good condition because not, not a, sometimes like someone can come in and might want them. All right, say I'm putting on a pair, and I, I, people used to say there were certain kinds you couldn't wear on the basketball court unless you really were a true basketball player. I don't know, was it the black high tops, the three-quarter high tops? What, 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 can I not, what can I not pull off? You? Yeah. Come on, look at this. Come on, Mitch. I, I don't know. <laughs> we got to get out on court, then I can tell you what you can and can't uh, wear. If you, we got to get out there first. Maybe Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the extent of it. And even then, I'm not so sure. For you, what's the, what's the future in business? Uh, is it uh, more boutiques around the country? Do you just like having it home here in Chicago? What do you want to do? Well, I think possibly um, we're looking now to find a second location for success. And not only that, you know, if not that, I also have full spectrum printing to where we're doing a lot of the print work for universities and uh, collectors and all that, family unions and things of that nature. Printing, did you have any experience in that before you got involved? I like clothes. But then big guys like myself, it's hard to find. Yeah, I like, know the feeling. Like, like nice stuff. Yeah, yeah, I know. See, it, it, your size, Mitch, you, you probably can find everything. <laughs> well, my size fluctuates rather frequently, <laughs> I'll tell you that, <laughs> my size. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk about the future. We're going to talk about what, what else Bobby has in store in the NBA or uh, maybe with his family. And we're going to hear a little more from Band Called Catch. Stay with us. Welcome back, Sports City Chicago here with Bobby Simmons and Bobby, uh, NBA in a lockout. Uh, I, there, a lot of people speculating it could be a lot worse than the NFL. For you, what is the future? Uh, obviously, uh, I would think you've still, you've still got some playing days left in you. You want to be involved? Yeah, of course. Um, still train some days twice a day. Um, just basically stay in shape and wait to see what happens. You know, uh, lockout is pretty serious. And, you know, it's a business. As right. we both know, but um, just have to wait, wait it out and see what happens. And uh, getting some extra family time, which must be nice. You, you, any trips uh, going to plan or just little getaways if possible? Well, you know, my son is in school now, so it's not like... Do you take can... him to school and pick him up? Sometimes. Yeah. 
sometimes. It's great. Yeah. I get the chance to do that too. It's awesome. <laughs> it really is. Well, it normally is. this time of year, I'll be getting ready to leave for right. our season. But other than that, you know, I enjoy it. All right. Well, we like to do five questions. I've got the I got them written down now because my memory's not the best. So whatever comes to mind, I may ask you to expand on it afterwards. But whatever comes to mind when I ask you the question, okay? okay. All right. First one. What person has the greatest sneaker collection that you know of besides you? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Have you seen it? Yeah. Incredible. I mean, you've been there. You've, yeah, incredible. Yeah, the shoes are based around him. You, you, got, every <laughs> you got to get every pair when they come out. I guess you're right. <laughs> Favorite Chicago spot for food, atmosphere, and people watching? All three? Yep. Uh, Sushi Sama slash Maestro's. Sweet, sweet. Um, you still, you got more? No. Sushi Samba slash Maestro. Yeah, that's going to be my choice. All right. Best blue demon of all time? Best blue demon? Can't pick yourself. I can't pick, okay, George Mikan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Best street ball player in the city of Chicago as you grew up that you knew of? Street ball player? Other than myself. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I know it would be Bobby Simmons for every answer. Yeah, yeah there you That's just, that's right. That's the right thing to do is pick myself. <laughs> um, street ball. Michael Herman. Michael Herman. Last one. Best lesson learned in business so far? Oh, best lesson? I would say being an overseer fi over financials. Best lesson learned. I don't want to ask if you've been burned. I haven't. Okay. That's the best lesson, but I heard some horror stories. And, right. Whether it's management or, or just, <laughs> I, I got you. That's the best lesson learned. All right. I want to thank Bobby Simmons, NBA basketball player and successful businessman. Success Boutique is the store here in Chicago. The address? 1329 South Michigan. All right, thanks a lot for joining us on Sports City Chicago. Thanks, Appreciate it. Thank you also to Jessica Vacco with our story with Bobby at Success. And of course, the great sounds of band called Catch. And thank you very much to Hard Rock Cafe Chicago for this wonderful place to uh, broadcast the show from. We'll see you all again soon on Sports City Chicago. I'm Mitch Robinson. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.